Well, as I said, I put that report together yesterday. And uh, Mr. Arewani, based on what you, you, you actually watched the presentation yes. live, which was broadcast live on Channel Salvation, and it was also streamed on uh, Weblink as well. And um, with that report, is there anything really to celebrate? We're the 26th largest economy now, we've overtaken South Africa. And uh, more and more, investors are beginning to pay attention to Nigeria. So we're seeing a serious incursion of investors, foreign direct investment to Nigeria. But is there really any reason to celebrate? Um, first and foremost, the purpose of rebasing is to have data integrity and accuracy, which makes it more, you know, better comparison. So that's been established. Uh, what you have is that you are the 26th largest economy in the world in nominal value, but you are number 121 when it comes to your people. So you went up four spaces when it com comes to your people and the welfare of your people, whilst in nominal terms, you are actually number 26. But what is important is that your economy, you have 2.5% of the world's population, but you are producing 0.81% of the world's output. Your GDP, potential GDP is going at 11%, while your real GDP is going at 7%. Uh, but one thing has to be clear. GDP is an output measure, not a revenue measure. Mm. So what you have measured is the output in a year and brought it back to the value of a base year. So you could have re done this rebasing every five years, but you didn't do it for 20 years. So basically, what you're doing, you're playing catch up. But the reality is that the question you ask yourself is that between yesterday and today, the balance on your account, has it increased? The money in your pocket, has it increased? The price of goods which you bought yesterday, have they improved since yesterday? Mm. Has the exchange rate <coughs> altered since yesterday? But sorry, let me just interrupt And you finally, yeah. okay. if you didn't have a job yesterday, do you have a job today? So uh, uh, is all of this supposed to change? All these five th items you just mentioned, mentioned now, is, is it supposed to change? Are we supposed to see that change in the coming days? No. No, what I'm trying to say is that there's a dif difference between economic reality and economic vanity. Okay, and uh, there's a feel-good factor. But for accuracy, for data integrity, for compari comparison, this is excellent. I think the Bureau of Statistics have done a good job. The Minister of Finance went further to say that, look, we're not going to go on a spending binge. In any case, your revenue hasn't changed. Hmm. So you couldn't even spend. But there are certain variables, certain factors that is debt to GDP ratio, which has declined, which gives you some room to actually borrow some more. So if you are fiscally re reckless, you can actually use this as an excuse. But more important is that because your GDP, nominal GDP is higher, your GDP growth rate is going to drop to something between 4 and 4.5%. Mm. So whilst you may celebrate a large nominal GDP, your growth rate is going to come down, which is okay. But more important is that your GDP per capita and your consumption per capita, which measures your prosperity and your welfare, has actually come down. So the welfare variables come down. Okay. Your misery index increases. However, your nominal GDP is, 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 is higher. All right. Uh, well, we're being joined now on the program by the Statistician General of the Federation, Dr. Yemi Kale. He joins us uh, from our Abuja studios. Uh, good morning, uh, Dr. Kale, and thank you so much for joining us on the program this morning. Good morning. Uh, we seem to be having issues. Uh, Oh, there you are. Good morning, Dr. Kali. Can you hear me? Good morning. I can hear you. Thank you. Oh, it's me. a pleasure to have you on the program. And uh, you're the star of the moment. You know, from yesterday till today, I, I guess for, for most of, uh, of this month, everybody's going to be talking about you and uh, what your ministry actually did, the National Bureau of Statistics, that is, what they actually did to ensure that uh, the figures, the rebased, revenge marker uh, GDP actually came out when... You know, you said it was going to come out, even though with the delays and all the rest. But let me quickly, because I'm very sure you listened to what uh, Mr. Ruwani said, let me quickly take you up on the fact that uh, he says the consumption line has actually dropped. You actually talked about that during your presentation yesterday. That's in the survey that was conducted. We noticed, you noticed that uh, there was a drop in consumer. In, in, there was a, a, it was understated. That's the word that you used. Now, based on what he has actually said, how much of an improvement or how soon is a survey or, um, yes, a survey going to be taken up by the agency to ensure that we have all the numbers properly computed together so that the, the, the numbers actually tally? Well, like I've said several times, um, 
as far as the Bureau of Statistics is concerned, this is not, uh, we are not celebrating the numbers that came out from the rebased, rebasing of GDP. What is more important to us is that it's part of a process of getting our data right, getting our, our numbers right, because it is these numbers that are required to inform policy and make accurate decisions. That's basically where our mandate stops. Um, so in, ter in terms of getting household consumption numbers right, we said that it, 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 show, it seemed to indicate that maybe the consumption numbers that we are used for um, other analyses were maybe understated. And I think I tried to explain the possibilities why um, consumption could be understated. For example, the fact that a lot of the commodities that foods that we eat in Nigeria are not on the FAO calorie table, so we cannot use it. So we have to throw out trillions of naira worth of consumption. The fact that um, you are, you are, the way we get data in Nigeria, which is still very um, um, uh, manual, is that you are, you, are, you are relying on households to remember what they, what they purchased um, and how much it cost for a whole year. Um, there's a possibility that people will tend to forget and you have some items that will, will fall out of uh, consumption. So, and what the rebasing has showed us that there's a possibility that it might be understated. Now, it's something that we have to go and review. We are trying to see if we can be doing consumption expenditure surveys more frequently, um, probably every quarter, around the same time we are doing our GDP numbers, so we can get um, more up-to-date consumption expenditure data. Uh, and this is basically a process of statistical reforms that we believe is going to go forward. And, and, and we are just hoping that um, people understand it uh, just uh, and are patient with us to allow us to do our work to complete all the other data requirements that are needed. Well, Dr. Talley, now let me take you to another aspect you actually talked about during your presentation yesterday. You talked about the poverty line. And uh, very recently, a World Bank report was, uh, was released and indicated that Nigeria is among the Ex more, was among the most extremely poor countries. Now, with this rebasing, is there, is this going to change? Is there going to be, for instance, um, decisions, policy decisions that will ensure that all those parameters that probably were used to measure the fact that Nigeria is, list of, is among the most extremely poor countries will change? Well, first, let me state that the, the, the poverty numbers that were used actually by the World Bank came from our office. Uh, so it's not that it was made from outside Nigeria. Um, but what I'm trying to emphasize is that um, we use a much higher poverty line, the highest in the world. We use 3,000 calories as our absolute poverty benchmark. And the highest any other country in the world has used is 2005, 2000, 2005. Some countries even use 2000, 1005. So we set a higher... Um, hurdle to cross for our government, but that's more for internal use. Uh, when you want to compare across countries, you still have to adjust those figures, so you are comparing apples with apples, um, and that has not been done. So it's just a point that has to, it's, it's just things that are usually stated in our methodology document, but I guess uh, they are usually very bulky. I guess a lot of people don't take time to go through them. Um, so again, rebasing, like um, Mr. Iwana said, doesn't, didn't change anything. We didn't become richer than we, we were yesterday. All it is about is measuring more accurately, measuring the structure of our economy more accurately. I try to describe it as, uh, as measuring your height more accurately. Now, if you measure your height using a pencil, you would understate it, overstate it, because you are backing the wall, and you cannot actually see what the ruler or pencil is, is whether it's straight or not. But if you go to a hospital and use a standard um, uh, height measurement, you measure your, your height accurately. So rebasing is just about measuring accurate. The output that we released was already in the system. We just did not realize it. That's all. There's nothing that has changed in terms of welfare, nothing has changed in terms of people's revenue or income. All that we are saying is that we've captured it better and more accurately. Um, and that's basically what this is all about. Well, Dr. Kale, just hold on to your thoughts there. Let's uh, come back here to our Lagos studio and, uh, of course, the, the CEO of uh, of financial derivatives company, Mr. Bismarck Mwani is still here with me. So you can also just listen in on his thoughts as well on, on this issue. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Rewani, for, for sticking with yeah. us. And uh, of course, you heard uh, Dr. Kali. Yeah. And um, 
you know, just before I asked you this question, in that report, it was actually stated that the GDP per capita is now 2,688. And, you know, from what he's also just said, it, it seems as if, well, he said that the, the numbers that the World Bank got as regards Nigeria being among the most extremely poor countries was actually gotten from the National Bureau of Statistics. Yes. So the numbers were not fabricated from anywhere. Mm. So it's not as if they, they don't understand that there is a challenge and there is a problem. But looking at it, and you've always talked about the misery index. <laughs> Can you relate it with these figures? Uh, first of all, let me congratulate uh, Dr. Kale for a good job in terms of data integrity, data comparability, and data management. I think uh, for the first time we are seeing data points that can be relied upon. Secondly, we're coming out frequently and in a manner which can be used. Uh, having said that, two things come up to mind. One is that the level of income inequality has actually increased. That is, Gini coefficient has increased, which means that even though the income is increasing, it's accruing to fewer people. And the problem with income inequality is that it leads to, it leads societies to become more prone to instability because income inequality one, poverty two, and lack of opportunity three. Those are the three issues that drive social conflict today. So the Bureau of Statistics has done its job by putting the data out there. Mm. The policymakers and the managers of the economy have to use this to make decisions, to use it as a tool of economic management. That's the key to this thing. The reality is that the misery index measures your unemployment plus your inflation. So if you say that 50% of the GDP is from the services sector, and services by nature are not, not labor-intensive, which means that the real GDP and the new GDP are divergent, my fear is that by greater emphasis on services, you may be creating less jobs than you can do ideally, mm. because the potential GDP is GDP at full employment. And therefore, if you have 170 million people and agriculture has now actually decreased in its contribution, not because of anything, but because other sectors have actually in increased, there's a need to strategically invest aggressively in the real sector which employs people so that you can keep these people at, uh, at work. Hmm. Because if they're not at work and they're unemployed and they're confronted with high inflation, then you have a misery index. Economics is now about welfare. It's not just about numbers. So the numbers help, but and in the end, you have, people have to be happier. People cannot prepare, pretend to be prosperous. Mm. So the Nigerian public is going to be asking themselves, thank you very much, Mr. Statistician. You've given us the numbers. How does it affect me? Mr. Statistician says, look, I've given these numbers out to the managers of the economy. They've got to make some decisions which will improve your welfare. But the first step is this step that numbers have to be accurate, have to have integrity, and then they have to be used strategically.